Welcome to Moments with Marianne. This is your host, Marianne Pastana. And we're here today with two very special guests, Jean-Louis Rodrigue and Scott Weintraub. And they're here today to share with us their new book, Back to the Body, Infusing Physical Life into Characters in Theater and Film. So can the secret practices of top actors help you to create a highly successful life? Well, today we're going to cover just that. Both John louis and Scott have such extraordinary background in theater and film. We're going to touch on some of the key points. Jean-Louis Rodrigue is an internationally recognized acting coach, movement director, and specialist in the application of the Alexander Technique to film, theater, and television. In film, he's coached actors and collaborated with directors in Passion Fish, Vice, J. Edgar, Life of Pi, Tanya, and many more. For the past 34 years, he's taught at the UCLA School of Theater, Film, and Television and the UCLA Herb Alpert School of Music. Scott Weintraub is an actor, director, and educator, and his TV credits include Deadwood and Curb Your Enthusiasm. For the past 37 years, Scott has taught and directed theater at Crossroads School for Arts and Sciences in Santa Monica. So welcome to the show, Jean-Louis Rodrigue and Scott Weintraub. Thank you so much. We're so happy to be here and excited to talk to you. Yes, thank you. My goodness, what a great book, Back to the Body is. What inspired you both to write this? Jean-Louis and I have been uh, doing theater for most of our lives uh, since we were young persons. And uh, over time, we have noticed that uh, actors are becoming, their work is becoming so static and still and almost dead. The original title for the book was going to be Resurrection of the Actor, which we thought was a little pretentious that, wait, we're going to bring the actor back to life. But uh, physicality is so important, not just in acting and in public speaking, but just in life, how we move and how we Uh, go through our days that uh, we thought that our experience could help help the planet. Jean-Louis? And the best kind of communication and acting comes from the visceral part of of the human experience. And what I mean by visceral, it's, it's more of a gut feeling or an organ feeling. It comes from a deeper place inside of us. And that's where the truth and authenticity um, lies, right inside of you, deep, deep, deep. And also in uh, uh, today's world, where everyone is so focused on their phones and devices, and everyone is curved over and slumped down, and they're We've lost the ability to go up and to find lightness in our movement and in our world. Isn't that the truth? My goodness, there's just so much that's going on on devices. I mean, that whole movement part in many ways seems to be forgotten. Why is it so important that we really start working the body and and moving? And and really, I mean, I know we've been talking about actors, but this is for everybody, right? Absolutely. It is for everybody that communicates. So um, this is our profound idea of the two of us, that we we believe everyone has a story. And everyone, whether you're in business, politics, uh, uh, education, we all want to communicate our inner world outside. And the effectiveness of that happens through the body. The body is really the best communicator. Uh, 70% of communication happens in the body. Uh, 20% is in the voice. And uh, content, it's only between 7 and 10%. It's amazing. So what we do in the book is we are trying to help people connect 
uh, to the self. When we talk about uh, different jobs have different tools that they use. If you're a carpenter, what tools do you need to do your work? You need a saw and you need a, a hammer. Uh, you're a chef. You're going to work. What do you need to do your work? You need a chef's knife and you need a spatula, a mixing bowl. As an actor, all the tools you need are yourself. And the self is made up of your voice, your body, your mind, and your heart, your heart, your soul, your spirit, whatever it is that makes you who you are. And as humans, uh, you use these tools together or sometimes separately, and you can communicate ideas and feelings and stories. Uh, also, as far as people not using their bodies anymore, uh, I was, uh, when I was teaching, uh, at Crossroads School in Santa Monica, and I taught theater to second graders through 12th graders and directed them. And this is a true story. And this happened, I want to say, seven years ago. It's gotten even worse, where a couple of uh, kids were saying, hey, let's uh, I'll come over to your house. Oh, what do you want to play? You want to play baseball or tennis? Oh, let's play tennis. And they took out their phones and they started to play tennis on their phones. So uh, just for young people, just walking around with the backpacks they have while they're looking at their phones, we are creating a generation of people who are just so down and heavy. And I don't mean heavy as far as weight. I mean, just moving and pounding. Uh, it's so dangerous for your joints and for your back, how people are moving nowadays. And also, if you think about communication between people, it's, it's really happening in an energetic way. So the, the body is, much, is very similar to a musical instrument. So uh, in order to play beautiful music, you have to tune your instrument. You have to be familiar with the, with the instrument. You have to use it every day. And you have to practice. Practice communication is not encouraged in our, in our culture. So what's happening to our uh, new generation is that they, they are out of practice in how to communicate with each other, to the world, um, and, and to themselves. This is the, the interesting thing. After a while, you don't know how to talk to yourself. And uh, and uh, and then take that those inner ideas in the outer world. It's a it's a fascinating fascinating problem to have, and for us, it has been really a um, an illuminating thing. And perhaps that's what got us to write this thing, which took us years to do. <laughs> Apparently, writing a book uh, is a time consuming activity. <laughs> Well, Jean-Louis and I both were teaching and directing, and Jean-Louis goes around the world that does conferences and festivals and master classes. So it was carving out two or three hours a week uh, to do this. Mm -hmm. And and the book kept getting longer. When we first, uh, we thought we were finished, and it was about 135 pages, and uh, it ended up being 278 well, and so we put in pictures and illustrations and all the exercises and explorations and stories and stories. That's because uh, it is not a textbook, Marianne. We were, wanted it to be uh, something that was a, a living, breathing. We're talking about light and movement, and we wanted the sense of light and movement in the book. Uh, when actors are in a play, they carry their script in their in their pocket all the day. It's with them always to write notes in and and diagrams and ideas. And we wanted the book to have that feel, and and I think we uh, we succeeded. Yeah, and also we wanted to give the actors a way of working. So we created the book almost like a workshop. So we might introduce an idea. And then give it a story. But then we say, now let's let's do it. Let's practically do this together. And it sounds as if they can actually put it to use and explore, especially we call them explorations. Rather than exercises, which sounds dry. And uh, it was important to us 
that well, what was so difficult is both Jean-Louis and I work very physically and vocally when we are working with actors or students. So to translate it into the written word, and we worked very hard trying it with people, is this clear? Can you do this? And uh, they can. Yeah, and uh, the interesting part of this is that we used some stories that actually happened to us and, <laughs> and, and are deep in our being. And sometimes when we were using the stories, we asked the, you know, the person involved, is it all right to use your story? And uh, almost 98% of the time, they said they were honored that we thought so much about our experience with them that we could talk to the, uh, about the story on a very deep, uh, lively way. And, and I hope that it came through. It came through through, uh, through the writing. It definitely is very well done. And I was very just amazed on things that we don't even think about. I think maybe people are just so disconnected from themselves and from the, the actual environment, not devices, that sometimes thinking about how our bodies move and, and how we communicate can seem like a foreign concept. Well, that's why we start out with being in the space, because that's... Uh, how we bring in all the elements of acting and working in theater or film. Uh, the whole basis of the book is the Alexander Technique, which uh, Jean-Louis, I must say, is, is one of the masters on the planet uh, right now uh, of teaching and uh, instructing people on how to uh, use this. Jean-Louis, would you talk? Is it okay if we talk a little bit about Alphabet? Sure, sure. Um, Some people may not have even heard of it. Now, uh, I, I just want to clarify, uh, I, I am one of the senior teachers of this technique in, in, in this country and uh, around the world. Um, I don't know if I'm the master, but certainly... Um, you I'm, are to me. <laughs> <laughs> what I've done, what I have done, is of applied the technique in a very practical way to uh, the activity of acting, whether it's on stage or in front of a camera or in front or in a, in a newsroom, right? And uh, and I want to help. I want to help people's uh, way of using themselves. So Alexander, I don't know if you're familiar with the. Uh, his his story. He was an Australian actor, and uh, his basic problem was that he lost his voice, and uh, in his struggle to regain it and to find out what he was doing that what that made him lose his voice, he discovered this uh, uh, amazingly simple and uh, profound technique which right now it's taught at Juilliard. For example, the Juilliard, the uh, acting school, the music school, they teach it and they have uh, literally five Alexander teachers on, uh, on faculty. So it is uh, everybody goes through it to help them get rid of habits. It's really about, you know, when we're talking about slumping, and contracting and not breathing, it becomes a habitual activity. And if it becomes a habit, we do not feel it anymore. This is the amazing thing about being human. The human nervous system accepts the habit and integrates it. And after a while, we don't know that we're tensing. We do not know that we're collapsing or contracting, and it becomes sort of uh, invisible. So the thing that we, we do not know about ourselves will literally affect everything that we do. So uh, public speakers, uh, doctors, surgeons, dentists, uh, any, anybody that is doing something skilled, needs to know what they're doing. And they and if they have tension, 
they need to learn to do less of that. They need to do the less tension. They need to um, work on themselves as a way of getting better. And how you do that is that there is a relationship between your head and your spine. Alexander called that the primary control. And this primary control is present in every animal. So if you look at a horse, why do we look at the horse and why do we um, uh, enjoy the movement of the horse? It's because the horse has a very connected relationship between the head and the spine. And that's where the elegance is. That's where the speed of the horse and uh, that's where the also the coordination of the horse happens. And that happens also if you look at athletes, like world-class athletes. It's amazing when you look at their bodies, they do look like animals. And, and, we, and we, enjoy, we enjoy watching this uh, ease and balance in their bodies. Well, there, there are two groups uh, that have no back problems, and those are animals and uh, babies. Little, when you first start to walk, you are walking correctly. You are up, you are open, and same thing with animals. They move. Alexander uh, connects you with your body, so you have the most efficiency and ease and power in everything you do. And it's those things that we don't even think about, how we get in and out of our car, how we, you know, um, pick something up, how we just walk into a room. And so the first step is identifying, and we take you through this in the book, identifying what are the things you do. Don't try to fix them immediately. Oh, I'm doing this, and then you overcompensate. So it is teaching an awareness of the body so you move the most efficiently. And especially in the world we live in, and Marianne, I'm sure you've noticed, I was going to say in the last five years, in the last two years, the craziness and the tension and the pace and the pressure that we all deal with now in our everyday life on this planet um, can be fixed in a moment for each person when you catch yourself, oh my God, I'm so tense, oh, I'm rushing, oh, I'm this. This is something called inhibition. And this is for anyone, anywhere. All you have to do is you stop and you breathe and you say these words out loud. I have time. Just try it, Marianne, right now. Just be in your body, just stop, and just let your breath out, take a breath in, and say, I have time. How empowering is that? You can feel the weight just being lifted from you, because I think a lot of people, we're kind of operating in these scrunched up little balls of tension. <laughs> and we're always rushing to get to the next thing. Uh I don't know of your age, but as Jean-Louis and I are our children of the 60s, and the, you know, be here now is sort of a relative of I have time. We're always thinking about the next thing, and we miss out on, on, uh, on our lives by rushing and, and trying to think what's next, what's next. Be in this moment in your body present with the people. So once we, in the book, once we start out explaining the uh, precepts of the Alexander technique and how to get in your body, the next thing is being in the space. How do we move in the space? The space that we're in influences how we move. And then from there, we bring in what are the things in the space? What are the objects in the space? And then the next section of the book is bringing in people. And then you talk about uh, relationship. And from there, uh, as far as acting goes, it's entering the world of the story, understanding the material, the time uh, you are in, 
And then uh, props, costumes. We have a section on, excuse me, <clears throat> we have a section on virtual reality and how to do that in, uh, in theater and film. But it is a comprehensive way of living your story, telling your story, and living in the present in your life. And Marianne, uh, one thing that that we do also is work with public speakers. And public speakers could be, for example, a newscaster. It could be uh, someone working at the UN. Could be an executive of a company. Exactly. It could be a religious leader. Um, there's so many leaders, even a, a, a podcast <laughs> host. Right. So we all we all have uh, a story to tell about our lives. And uh, and and we have a script, you know, where uh, that we are following. And uh, this work is so essential, especially right now. Uh, I think Alexander lived uh, his technique is way far in advance. Uh, you know, because all of this was developed at the turn of the century. I mean, that's how, how old it is. But yet, so very few people know about it. And um, and especially, uh, you know, to use it in life, to use it in, in as a practical tool. One of the other things, and, and forgive me, because I'm we're not letting you ask questions. We're just talking. <laughs> the, That's the okay. Other I thing, like to hear this. <laughs> we, we do a lot of work. We were talking about animals. We do a lot of work with animal studies. Mm. Uh, becoming an animal, being an animal connects you to uh, who you are, who we are. And... Uh, I was doing animal work with my uh, uh, third graders. Jean-Louis has been doing it for, for years as well. And it is a way for you to connect with a character. You have an image of what the animal is. You observe an animal and become the animal. And this is not just, oh, I'm a dog, woof, woof. How does the animal move? How do they sleep? How do they, what do they do when they're frightened? And... <clears throat> then you will transform the animal into a person, like a human animal. And you might start with, uh, what are your percentage might you start with, like 70% animal? Well, no, you, you, you will start actually with 100% an, animal, right. and then gradually you, uh, you uh, sh shift the percentage uh, the most interesting is when you have 50% animal and 50% human. That's where uh, our nervous system gets uh, quite uh, stimulated and sometimes even confused. And in that confusion, am I an animal? Am I a human? And what you really you begin to understand that really humans are animals, you know, and what we do what we do to ourselves in terms of interference it's uh, insane but then ultimately you know when um, uh, over the years i've been working with margot robbie the actress barbie we're talking about barbie here now uh when you're looking at barbie and she she you know she said you know what kind of animal is barbie I told her she really wasn't an animal she was a doll <laughs> so we had to uh, approach her differently but for example uh, when she did uh, uh, queen elizabeth you know in uh, in that in that movie and uh, i said to her uh, she was elegant she was a queen but she was also uh, a fighter and swans a bird that are uh, deeply deeply territorial and they will fight really hard for their territory and it was really fascinating to see how she integrated this in this historical um, character. And it really did help a lot. Well, on that note, we're going to pause here for a quick break. We've been speaking with Jean-Louis Rodrigue and Scott Weintraub in regards to their new book, Back to the Body. We'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors.
Are you an actor, public speaker, or an executive telling your story over Zoom? Jean-Louis Rodrigue in Scott Weintraub's new book, Back to the Body, takes the process they use to coach top Hollywood talent like Margot Robbie, Jack Black, and Ki Hui Kwan and makes it available to everyone. Using your body and its energy as a point of departure, your work will gain an enhanced level of performance and depth. Back to the Body, available on Amazon and wherever books are sold. Every day, pets are surrendered and abandoned. For these helpless and hurting animals, Paws Humane Society acts as a voice for the voiceless, providing hope for a brighter future. You can make a difference in the life of a shelter pet. Become a humane hero today. Just $10 a month will provide much-needed food, shelter, medical care, and love. It takes a community. It takes heroes like you. Together we can. Together we will. Together we are Paws Humane. Visit pawshumane.org to be a hero in every animal story. What if everything we think we know about addiction, depression, anxiety, and trauma is missing the one key element that will actually let you walk away from them for good? My name is Bob Gardner, founder of The Freedom Specialist and creator of a body-based approach that eliminates suffering and creates happiness, health, and well-being on autopilot. You can read all about it in my book, Built for Freedom, or start your own adventure toward lasting freedom at thefreedomspecialist.com. If you want to stop divorce fast, you do not need to waste years in therapy, you do not need to work on yourself, and you do not even have to have your spouse on board. If your spouse wants out, if they're filing for divorce, separation, or having an affair, what you need is a proven process to turn your marriage around. Book a free breakthrough session with us at highthrivecoaching.com slash apply. Dr. Richard London, who has 25 years of experience being known as the Man of Steel with the Heart of Velvet, presents the Life Wellness System, The Road to Yes, a mentoring system that brings you to becoming a wellness heir. Imagine having wealth, wellness, love, peace, and spirituality in abundance and balance now. Visit doctorateoflife.com or call 720-213-8021 for a free 15-minute wellness evaluation. The first thing you need to know about me is that I love my kids, but they are not my everything. They used to be, but that's when my entire life fell apart. In order to pick back up the pieces, I had to put the love I have for myself before everything else, including my kids. I'm Jessica Dennehy, and I own multiple businesses. I'm a best-selling author, and I have all the strategies that I've used to make my life what it is today. And I'm going to teach you how to do them in my new book, Selfish is a Superpower. So go get your copy today on Barnes & Noble or jessicadennehy.com. Announcing a revolutionary tool for wellness. Scalar Light has the ability to enhance and harmonize your own bio energies. With Scalar Light, you can get started in just minutes and begin feeling better the very next day. Scalar Light is a remote energy that gently and subtly works with your own body's bio energies, increases pro cellular wellness, and enhances your body's immunity. Experience the benefits of Scalar Light. Try a complimentary 15 day experience at scalarlight.com. In your hands lie ancestral patterns. These patterns shape how you think, what you struggle with, and experiences you love, your life pattern. We're going into the latest neuroscience of biological hand analysis, a realm beyond palmistry where science and the soul entwine. Hand analysis is the latest method to transform lifelong patterns. I am master hand analyst Brent Bruning. Join us and visit thepowerinyourhands.com. I'd like to thank Jason Eastwood at Guitarfulness for sharing his inspiring music and talent with us. His music is known worldwide for cultivating atmospheres of harmony, inner peace, and clarity. Visit Jason's website at guitarfulness.com. Join his newsletter, be part of his community, and download his music. Welcome back to Moments with Mary Ann. We're here today with special guests, Jean-Louis Rodrigue and Scott Weintraub, and they're here sharing with us their new book, Back to the Body, Infusing Physical Life into Characters in Theater and Film. 
So before I left for break, we were talking about the Barbie movie. So how did she integrate being a doll in the movie? I know Margot, she did such a beautiful job in that movie. So with Barbie, that was, that was the first time out of different five or six projects he's worked on because she loves doing the uh, animals. I think I, Tanya, what were right. the, there were two. I, Tanya, she was a, uh, uh, in uh, I, Tanya, she was a workhorse and she was also a bulldog and, uh, and, um, and it, it, it helps her a lot, but in, uh, in Barbie, what we were working with is more of working with archetypes, which also is in the book. And so the archetype for uh, Barbie was that on some level, she there, there's, a, there's a very childlike nature uh, that Barbie has. She is a doll after all, and she uh, she works with children. And so she was very, very connected with children. And so uh, the child was very, very big in her. And uh, uh, over the course of the film, you can see her right. go from her joints start to loosen. And she it was almost like a, uh, the Pinocchio story of oh, becoming a real person and becoming more uh, open and flexible. And ultimately, ultimately, uh, you know, she becomes human. And in order to be uh, this uh, activist, because she does become an activist, she has to search more. And so she becomes more of a hunter and a warrior. So she used these archetypes in her body and you could see it. It was a struggle, but she she was quite successful. And at the end, of course, she is given you know, the gift of being human. And uh, everything that comes with that. <laughs> All the struggles that come with being human. Exactly. And more and more, apparently, <laughs> as the world goes on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What a what a great actress. And, and you have, both of you have just such a resume that is just untouchable. What is another story you'd like to share with us? Uh, this is, this one... Uh, Jason Ritter, who I first worked with in second grade, and he's he's working a lot. He's one of I think we both love these actors who transform and play different characters because he can do comedy, he can do tragedy, he's quirky, he's fun. And uh, there was a great uh, Tina Howe play called Museum, which is the uh, uh, closing day of a. Uh, modern art exhibit of installations in a museum focusing on just the people who are in the museum that day. Um, excuse me. Uh, the museum guards who we don't think about because we just see them standing there, but the guards uh, just watching people come in and out are the focus of it. Jason was playing a photographer. The whole play is really a character study. There's not a story per se. It's the story of this day in the museum. And as the photographer, uh, as far as his character, he was thinking, what if, what if I'm, and I have this tick, I have this uh, uh, tick with my, with my eyes sort of blinking all the time and squinching. And, and I said, that would be, that would be sort of cool and funny. Can you sustain that for the entire two hour play? And he said, yeah, I, I think I can. So he was, you know, just taking pictures of the things going through the play. And he kept, you know, squinching his eyes and, and blinking. And a friend of mine came and saw the show. And afterwards he said, oh, great show. The guy who played the photographer, he was great. Too bad he has that tick thing because he'll never. And I went, no, no, it was a choice. It was acting. So it's, uh, again, when you come up with something, uh, Jean-Louis and I both love taking risks in the work and we approach everything with, wait, what if this happened? What if we did this? And uh, uh, it seems to be effective. Yeah, I, I have a, a little story here with uh, Christian Bale. And Christian was uh, approaching uh, uh, Dick Cheney uh, in uh, in uh, the this film called Vice, and and Dick Cheney is a, a, a it's a difficult role, 
And I, I never thought that we uh, that I would be involved with all these political figures, but um, I love his work. He's very disciplined. Uh, Christian Bale is very disciplined, and he wanted to bring reality into the role. But he said to me, um, uh, "I'm a new dad. I have a young a boy, and every time I take a character, I make such." big physical choices that I hurt myself. And, and he said, uh, you know, working with you, it's really about preventing that to happen. I, I don't want to have an injury after uh, playing Dick Cheney, so I cannot play with my, my boy, which was a great uh, process for me and, and, and a great intention. So we used an animal for uh, you know he was uh he's he was a bullfrog he used a bullfrog for dick cheney because dick cheney looks if you look at him he looks at the world from uh, peripherally from the side right so um even the script was you uh, uh originally it was called back seat back seat because dick cheney was always worked in government from behind you know he was a very strong uh manipulator but you you didn't see him in front so um we wanted to have this physical way of looking at the world and slightly from underneath so he really used uh, the bullfrog beautifully i i thought it was brilliant and and uh, the other thing that that he enjoyed the Alexander technique a lot because Dick Cheney is quite physically um, uh, collapsed some, somewhat, and also that uh, Christian had to gain all this actual weight. He uh, I think he gained about 49, 50 pounds in reality, and uh, it was ridiculous. Yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot of weight, and uh, it was a lot of weight on his joints. And uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, we were working with a cardiologist because the you know the doc the doctor was quite worried about all this extra weight. And uh, but anyway, we uh, somehow he found the balance and the flexibility of expressing Dick Cheney uh, in a way that was authentic. And and you really do not see Christian Bale at all. I mean, when you look at him, he is Dick Cheney. Uh, he's totally transformed. And he was brilliant. It was a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant work. Uh, I so enjoyed working with him. Um, a, a great experience. And as far as taking risks, it's there is it's exciting doing theater because there is this fear what's going to happen it's it's happening right now you never know you can plan you can rehearse you can practice suddenly and uh the first time i worked with jack black he was uh, uh uh 17 years old and we were doing caucasian chalk circle by bertolt brecht not many high schools do that but hey why not let's try <laughs> something and he was as dak the judge he was brilliant and the night before we opened he called me and he said, I'm, 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 I'm really sorry. I, I, I can't do it. I, I can't, I can't be in the play. I can't do the play. This is the night before opening night. He said, I'm sorry. I just, I just can't. It's, I can't, I don't. And I said, okay, all right. All right. You don't, you don't have to do the play. We won't do the play. Meet me tomorrow at the diner. Let's talk about this. So we met at lunch and he said, I mean, I love doing theater, but this is real. This is scary. I said, look, it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter. It's an experience. What's the worst thing that'll happen? It'll it'll be horrible and we'll learn from it. And it doesn't matter. Also, I said, just what you've been doing in rehearsals is fine. If you just do that, it's going to play and everyone's going to love it. And he said, you know, OK. And he did it. And he was brilliant. And we're still close. And to this day, Whenever maybe someone approaches him about a project and he says, no, I don't want to do it. And he stops and he says, wait, 
am I saying no just because I'm scared or is there really a reason not to do this? And he uses that now in his life, making decisions and saying, hey, what have I got to lose? It's uh, uh, let's just go and see what happens. We talked about actors and my goodness, you both have, again, this extraordinary resume with people that you've worked with and the work that you've done. So for people who maybe aren't actors, how does this relate to their lives? Uh, it's a, it's a fabulous question. And, uh, let me, let me use, um, and I hope he will be okay about me using his story. Uh, it's not in the book actually, but, um, one of my first students, uh, probably back in the early eighties, uh, and I think it was in San Francisco was a mailman. And and he was very quiet, and uh, but he had a lot of pain in his back. And he explained that it was a re- the repetitive uh, action of lifting mail and then delivering the mail. And uh, that was the problem. And um, and how lonely that activity is. And that's true right now especially right now, because there's so many delivery persons that do, you know, and they have to be fast and efficient. And, but the, you know, it's, it's a hard, hard work. And it's a repetitive task that they're doing over and over again. So he came to me uh, saying to me, you know, that his back hurt, his neck uh, hurt. He seemed depressed to me also, he seemed lonely and depressed. And even his skin, he had a uh, very, very bad skin. Anyway, and, and quiet. He was very quiet uh, in expressing his inner world, so to speak. So I decided that I would just work with the Alexander Technique and, and teach him how to use his body in his activity of lifting the mail and delivering the mail all these repetitive actions. And we did it for about six months. He came every week. And uh, finally, about probably about the sixth month, uh, one day he came in smiling. And I looked at him and I said, uh, what's going on? <laughs> you seem different today. So he said, I'm actually feeling pretty good. And I am, my back feels stronger and I don't feel the pain that I usually feel. And that's making me very happy. And then I looked at him more clearly and I realized that his skin had cleared up. Had, yeah, I know. It's crazy. <laughs> his skin was better and he looked like he had more emotion. And at that, at that point, when I looked at him, there was a recognition between the two of us that he was being actually more expressive. A mailman. And that taught me uh, to realize that a, 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 a person that does a, a sort of like a me, you know, like a, a job that is so repetitive and that no one looks at, you know. I mean, uh, you know, I, I always say hello to the my mail woman that delivers mail, but but it it, it can affect a- anybody, you know, whether you're working at a checkout uh, machine or whether you're uh, the, the dentist. I was talking to my dentist and I was saying, uh, "How's your neck?" <laughs> and he said, "Oh, my neck is so stiff." So it affects everybody. And every single per this work can help everyone just in being aware of their body. Yep. And so many times people will say, God, I have I have this thing in my arm. Well, it's not a thing in your arm. It's a thing connected to your shoulder, which is connected to your back and to the primary control. You have you're moving through your life with your head hanging down and pushing it way forward so that you're like a a turtle head person. So it's just in how we move. And if you are open and up, 
then you are energized and it will make it so your voice comes out more easily and you can express yourself to the people around you. And it's uh, that's why it is a book for actors, but it really is for anyone who communicates or lives and moves through the world. We can't stress that enough. And you don't have to be, oh, I'm not in a play. I'm not, and I'm not even saying a poem. <laughs> you go through this book and there are concepts just about being human. We can all use help with that. My goodness. That's such a big deal. When, mm -hmm. when it comes to like identifying what animal we should embody, how does that work? Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, what a great question. So um, I am a nature video. Uh, I'm obsessed in watch. I go to sleep every night watching uh, uh, <laughs> nature videos. In fact, last night, I think I was looking at these bird predators uh, eating mice. And <laughs> it was great. I loved it. And uh, basically, number one, uh, we watch we study animals and we consider them. And, and I think uh, right now there's a love for animals because, you know, we know that they are deeply endangered because of the environment and climate change. And so the, I, I'm happy to know that people are more conscious, but the, the, I've, I've gone a step beyond, uh, which is literally taking the animal energy inside my body. And why I'm doing that is because sometimes, um, you know, we lack courage or we lack strength or we lack uh, 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 peace, peace, the or idea peace, of exactly. being still and just being in the moment. So the animals can offer us that. Uh, and, the, and the way that we teach animal work is really to be the animal and get this quality that the animal, for example, if I want to uh, be stronger and I might want to use an elephant, like an Afri uh, African elephant, because they're so large and, and they have weight, and they're, and they're not afraid. They know they're the top apex predator. You know, I, I mean, elephants are really not predators, but they are, they're, they're, and even lions don't fool around with elephants. So they're, they're, you know, if I want to have that size and that energy and the depth of an elephant, because they, you know, they have great memory and they're very clear in what they're experiencing in life. And they have this superpower, you know, they can listen through their feet. I mean, how wonderful is that? And they, the, as far as choosing an animal, if you are working on a project, on a character, in a play or a film, that what you do in the story and what the uh, text is, is going to influence it. But in day-to-day -day life, it's not, if I was an animal, which animal would I be? As Jean-Louis says, it depends on what the task is that is in mm -hmm. front of you or what your day holds for you. So you can say, oh, I have a lot of stuff coming at me. I am just going to be a cat who is very in their body and connected to the ground and watching and seeing. So you choose what animal you want. You don't have to say, this is my animal. It's not like a spirit animal uh, where, oh, this is my essence. It's what will serve you in the best way where your body is and what is your situation in that moment. Yeah. And uh, luckily, luckily, there is some literature that people can have. For example, there's a wonderful book called um, what is it called? Is called the Book of Symbols, the Book of Symbols, and uh, and it's all about the union uh, element of how to understand symbols. And of course, animals are incredibly strong symbols. For example, the United States is represented by an eagle. 
right? Uh, the city of Berlin is represented by a bear, a dancing bear, as a matter of fact. So, um, so cities are use symbols to give them strength to express their uh, soul. Uh, the symbol of Venice, by the way, uh, and it was a very old symbol that was picked, uh, you know, hundreds of years old. The... It, it was a flying lion. Flying lion. And why flying li lion? Because uh, Venice was a, a city of, uh, of merchants that traveled to China, you know, uh, in the Middle Ages. So it, it it's very exciting to know that. Uh, an animal can have such a powerful effect on how people function, you know, so it, it's not new, but, uh, but I think today for us to uh, bring in animals into our lives, not only does it, it brings us together with the animal world so we can save the animal world, but also it just so helpful to, um, to know that animals are so practical, you know, they, you know, they're hungry, they will focus on getting a meal. <laughs> Their territory is being uh, invaded by other animals, they will protect. Uh, and if the children, you know, the cubs are in, in danger, they will be right there doing what they have to do. Which is why we can learn from the animals, they are the poster children for exactly. being in the moment. What is happening right now? How am I going to approach this? And throughout the book, besides animals, we use anything we can. Uh, again, symbols, uh, images, music, all these things, you use whatever you can. And we show in Back to the Body how we can do that and change our lives and the lives of the people around us. Oh my goodness, Jean-Louis and Scott, it has been such an honor to spend this time with you. Where can our listeners connect with you both and be part of your community and learn more about Back to the Body? Well, they can. We have a website, which is www.alexandertechworks. Techworks, one word, T-E-C-H-W-O-R-K-S. Dot com. They can check. It's a... It's a um, very, very interesting website, and they can get a lot of information. Uh, there's Alexander teachers literally all over the world. So it doesn't matter where you are, uh, you can look for an Alexander teacher, uh, fortunately. And but also, but also they can buy the book. Uh, the book is such a good way to get informed and to get stimulated and see where it goes with it. Um, and if you're somewhere where you're very isolated and alone, uh, that's why we wrote the book, is that you can literally experience a difference in your life. And again, all the, the format of the book besides the scope of it, uh, as far as starting with Alexander, then the space, then people, et cetera, uh, is we talk about a concept, why it's important, maybe there's a story. Then there's these explorations, which you can do with a group of people, or you can uh, do it alone. Uh, and then there's reflections. How did you feel? What did you notice? So it's uh, we are both very big with lifelong learning and this will open many doors for people. And uh, we cannot thank you enough for uh, letting us share this with you. It was really just a, a, a delight. Thank you so much, Marianne. Yes, thank you, Marianne. Well, thank you both. It has been such an honor to spend this time with you and to talk about your new book, Back to the Body, infusing physical life into characters in theater and film. Back to the Body is available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and pretty much everywhere books are sold. And remember, support our indie bookstores. If you don't see it on the shelf, please ask for them to order it. Make sure to visit the website, Alexander Tech Works. They have workshops coming up that you don't want to miss. Well, we're at the end of our time today. 
I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne, where we make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work, and while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmarianne.com for more information.